And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Foraminocephaly, which was a request from Crow via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was a pachycephalosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Canada. And it looked kind of like pachycephalosaurus. It walked on two legs, it had a dome, it had a long tail. It was small and bipedal, estimated to be about five feet or one and a half meters long and weighed 22 pounds or 10 kilograms. It's pretty small, a lot smaller than pachycephalosaurus. Mm hmm. It was herbivorous and it had a thick dome on its skull. And the top of the dome had lots of small pits. That's interesting. Yeah. The bone on the front and top of the head projects backwards and downwards over the base of the skull. Okay, yeah, I think that's the kind of thing we see on pachycephalosaurs in general, sort of the back. I almost see it like hair when I see that with the like bump <laughs> sticking out at the base of the like crown bump. Mm-hmm. Almost. <laughs> The type species is Foraminocephaly brevis. The fossils were found in 1902, and at first it was thought to be a new species of Stegocerus, Stegocerus brevis, by Lawrence Lamb. Then it was later assigned to Prenocephaly and then to Spherotholus. Lawrence Lamb wrote, quote, As a rule, the bones are well preserved but very fragile so that the greatest care is requisite and special precautions necessary before their removal can be attempted, end quote. <laughs> This sounds kind of poetic. Yeah. He also wrote, quote, For these bones, the name Stegocerus validus is proposed with the hope that future discoveries may aid in a clearer understanding of their affinities. It seems like an aspirational species name, validus. <laughs> like, I'm going to name it validus, and then in the future, we're going to find some stuff, and it'll show that it's valid. <laughs> yeah. Well, then in 2011, Ryan Schott suggested a new genus name, Foraminocephaly, in a thesis, and then it was formally named by Schott and David Evans in 2016. The genus name means foramina head, the open holes on the top, and there have been 21 specimens found, so there's a growth series. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. And most of the specimens found were of subadults. Okay, that could help to explain the small size. That's still pretty small, but yeah. The growth series also helps show how foraminocephaly is different from Stegocerus. It's good. Otherwise, it probably would have stayed named Stegocerus. Yes. <laughs> a young Stegocerus had a flat dome, but a young foraminocephaly specimens, they had slight domes. Foraminocephaly also had less empty space in the skull roof, and the sides of the dome were less angled and the dome thickened at a slower rate than Stegocerus. There's quite a few differences. Yeah. The dome for foraminocephaly also gets taller with age, but not really wider. Turns into a cone head? <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. <laughs> or maybe just a, a dome head. <laughs> <laughs> Histology also showed the domes became less porous with age. There was less empty space. Other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as foraminocephaly included ankylosaurs, ceratopsians, hadrosaurs, and theropods. And other types of animals that lived around the same time and place included amphibians, crocodilians, lizards, fish, plesiosaurs, and mammals. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 